Welcome. Here we go on the third problem of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 Practice Final Exam. So this is a circuit design problem. We're going to design a circuit that given inputs i equals i0, i1, i2. So that's a three-bit input that we're just going to name i to refer to it easily. And p, that's presumably a one-bit input, determines the remainder when the signed binary number i so i is a 3-bit signed binary number, is divided by the pth prime number according to this table. That's a capital P here, that's a lowercase p there. I, I'm going to assume they are the same thing since there doesn't seem like there's any other sensible interpretation. So when p is 0, uh, the prime that we're dividing by is 2, and when p is 1, the prime is 3. So we're going to determine the remainder when i is divided by either 2 or 3. The remainder should be an unsigned binary number of the minimum number of bits necessary. Well, what's the largest remainder we can have? When we're dividing by 2, we can only have a remainder of 0 or 1. When we're dividing by 3, we can have a re remainder of 0, 1, or 2. So the largest remainder we can have is 2, and we can represent the numbers 0, 1, and 2 with just 2 bits. We can actually represent 0, 1, 2, and 3, so that means that the output 1, 1 is never going to be used. So we'll never have that as an output. Okay. For example, if i0, i1, i2 is 100, zero, zero, so that is, well, this is a signed binary number, so the first bit tells us whether it's positive or negative. Actually, it tells us whether it's non-negative or negative. So this is negative, and that means we need to flip the bits and add 1 to get the value. Oops. 0, 1, 1, flips the bits, and then we need to add 1 to that. I should really put this over on the, uh, the right-hand side like that. So that's going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Happens to be the same as that, so I know this is the most negative value we can have. And that is, this is the 1's place, 2's place, and 4's place, so this is the value negative 4. And p is equal to 1, so we're dividing by 2. Uh, negative 4, oh, I'm sorry, p is equal to 1, so we're dividing by 3. We've got to be careful about that. So 0 is 2, 1 is 3. So p, our prime, that is, is 3. Negative 4 divided by 3 is a little tricky, presumably that's why we're given the example. The closest we can get to negative 4 divided by 3 while keeping the result no larger than negative 4, so we avoid a negative remainder, is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So we get something that is negative 4 or less, negative 6. So then the remainder is 2, so negative 4 plus 2. Oh, sorry, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So the output would be 1, 0, because that's our result for 2. Kind of gave away the number of bits necessary over here, right? Provide propositional logic expressions for the circuit's outputs. Do not draw the circuit. Show your work for partial credit. So once we have the propositional logic expressions, translating it to a circuit is pretty straightforward. We're just going to take the propositional logic operators and convert them into circuit elements. So it's just asking us to give the design, which is our propositional logic model for a circuit. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what I'm going to do is just write out a table that has our results for each of the possible input values, uh, including P. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4 bits. I'm going to have a 16-row table, which would be a bit annoying to write in an exam. I want to keep this up so I can remind myself what P is. Let's see if I can fit my table. So I'm going to go ahead and write i in my table so I can find out what i actually is. i0, i1, i2. I will also put p into my table, but I'm also going to put the prime into the table because it's really i and the prime that I need to figure out my remainder. Put that double line in just to separate all of my inputs from my outputs. And that'll be the remainder as a number. Oh, well, a decimal number. And then I also need the remainder as an output 0, 0, 
1. Okay, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Obviously, I'm not going to fit all of this on this little bit of page here. But this is far enough for me to go for the moment, and I'll do the rest of the table a little later. This is the part of the table where P is 0. I'll do the part of the table where P is 1 a little later. Okay, so what's my prime? 2, in this case. What is I? I is 0, 1, 2, 3. Now we've got the negative numbers. This one we already saw above was negative 4. This is, well, if we flip the bits, 0, 1, 0, and add 1, we'd get 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's negative 3. And indeed, we're just sort of continuing around the clock here when we think of these as clock numbers, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and now we're on negative 3, and next up we're going to have negative 2, and then negative 1. And sure enough, 1, 1, 1, all 1s is the pattern we know means negative 1 for the 2's complement binary numbers. Okay, so what is the remainder when we divide this by 2? Well, that's easy. Uh, the remainder just tells us whether the number is even or odd when we divide by 2, right? So 0, when we divide that by 2, we're going to get a remainder of 0. We'll get a result of 0 and a remainder of 0. 1 for the number 1. 2 is divisible by 2, so we'll get 0 and then 1, 0 and then 1, 0 and then 1. I'm having trouble keeping track of my rows, so I'm just going to add an extra line in here so I can tell where things start and end. Okay, and so what is my output? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And if this were my whole circuit, this would be pretty easy. O0 is just constant 0 always. O1 is just the same as I2. So I can take advantage of that. I can say not P and each of those, and that'll make up this half of my truth table. Let's see how hard the second half of the truth table is going to be. So this is going to be the half of the truth table where our prime, I'll go ahead and add another line here so I can keep track of where I am, where our prime is 3 instead of 2. So this will be the same pattern, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then I'll put in a line, and then negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, these are all 1. These are all 3. You know what, I'm just going to write 3 in here big. I don't need an entry in every single spot. So, 0. Uh, what's the remainder when we divide that by 3? Well, that's going to be a remainder of 0. 3 times 0 is 0. No remainder. And then 1, 2. But 3 is divisible by 3, so we'll go back to 0. Negative 4 divided by 3. Well, we saw up above, that should give us a result of 2. Because we go down to negative 6. And this is 2 more than negative 6. Negative 3 is divisible by 3, so that'll give us a 0. Negative 2, well, that'll be a 1, because it's 1 more than negative 3. And this will be a 2, because it's 2 more than negative 3. So we'll get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, now we've got a truth table. We know for sure that we can create a circuit from the truth table. In particular, we can create a propositional logic expression for O0, and then we can create a separate propositional logic expression for O1 if we want to. So we know that we can do that. 
I know I could at this point just use the technique that we discussed earlier where I find all of the true rows and I make expressions for them. For O0, that sounds really promising actually because there's just one, two, three true rows. So that's probably what I'll do. For O1, I'd really like to find a pattern to make this easier because otherwise I'm going to be writing out one, two, three, four, five, six true rows. And that seems like a lot. We did notice a pattern as we were working on this, and the pattern was when p is 0, p is false, then O1 just corresponds to I2. So I'm going to start with O1, and I'm going to say, well, p false and I2 means that O1 is true. When p is true, we're going to have to fill in something else. And then we'll just or these two together. When either one of these is true, then O1 should be true, and that'll be up here, that'll be the top half of the table. It'll be false throughout the bottom half of the table because not P will be false throughout the bottom half of the table. So when we OR this together, it won't muck up the bottom half of the table, it'll be all zeros here, and so we'll just get whatever pattern comes from this side. And similarly, this will be all zeros in the top, and so it won't mess with the pattern that we've constructed here, which just matches I2. Okay. So what do we have on the bottom? Well, there's only two true rows on the bottom, so I'm probably just going to handle those two true rows and not do anything super clever. So that's going to be not I0 and not I1 and I2. I'm going to need more space than this. I, I'm going to write it down here, and then I'll rewrite it. Not I0 and not I1 and I2. That's one of my rows. Or what's my other one? It's here. That is I0 and I1 and not I2. I1 and not I2. Okay. And then that, oops, keep forgetting to switch to my eraser. That, when we and it together with P, So this is all one expression. This is P ended together with all of this. That's going to give us the bottom half of the table. We OR that together with this. That gives us the top half of the table. So this expression right here is our answer for I, I'm sorry, O, 1. OK. Hopefully that was the hard part. O0, we said, shouldn't be too hard because there are only three rows where it's true. I'm going to scroll down a little bit just because those three rows are down near the bottom. I need to remember this is I0, I1, I2, P, so I will just write that out down here so I can remember that. I0, I1, I2, and P. Okay, so I need to handle this row, this row, and this row. So O0 is going to be... In this row, we have P and not I0 and I1 and not I2. So P and not I0 and I1 and not I2. Let me just double check that. P and I0 is false. So we're going to say not I0. I1 is true, so we'll say I1. I2 is false, so we'll say not I2, and that'll give us something that's only true in this row. So when we OR it together with other things, we'll get this row being true, and then whatever other rows we specify true. So I've got two more to go. Uh, P is true, I0 is true, I1 and 2 are false. And finally, the very bottom row where it looks like everything is true. There we go. So this is my answer for O0. Now, could I write out these circuits? I absolutely could write out these circuits, but it would be a bit of a pain. So I'd rather not, and I'm glad the question doesn't ask me to. And in terms of part work for part credit, 
this truth table actually specifies everything that I need to know in here. So from that point on, we're kind of just doing a mechanical process. Now, I, I tried to be a little bit clever to get a more succinct expression for O1 over here. I didn't try to be clever at all with O0, but that part work should probably give me a lot of partial credit. And I should certainly start with something like a truth table for my design. And that is it.